Welcome to Actions and Limits. My name is Justin Atherton. I'm the Peak Performance Consultant for Confidence Unchained. With me as always is Paul Fortune. Paul is a mindset coach and the founder of A Call to Action. And together, we make Actions and Limits. So the podcast where we talk about the actions we can take and the limits we create. Another great week, Paul. I'm excited to bring our guest on. For everyone out there, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, wherever else we're at. I know all the different podcast platforms, whichever one is your favorite, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single interview because we got a lot of great ones coming up. So, Paul. I know uh, you were on uh, David Figueroa's podcast, and uh, we'll be bringing him out here in a minute. But uh, man, another another week. I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. I was I always look forward to to our, our shows. A lot of great guests we have on, man. Yeah, I've networked with David, and I like you said, I was on his podcast, and um, I'm really attracted to his his perseverance. Um, mm. He had uh, cerebral palsy, and uh, walks with a cane, but he's never allowed that to uh, stop him from what he wanted to do, playing sports and all kinds of stuff. And, and I think that he's a great example that we need somebody that we like to bring on to show that even know that things aren't exactly how they should be, he still finds a way with the growth mindset that he, that he shows to his, his, his students that he teaches. And when he, when he does speaking engagements. Sure. And, and it kind of, you know, takes the, you know, the normal complainers that complain about their life, it kind of gives them some perspective, right? It's like, man, I thought I had it bad, but, but look what this person is dealing with. And so it, sometimes it can put it into place for people that, that don't have disabilities that are like, man, he's accomplishing more than me. Like, what excuses do I have? And so it, it really comes down to the mindset. And I'll be curious to ask him, like, like, how did he get that? Because th there are similar stories like that out there. I mean, you know, one that comes to mind for us that we interviewed before was Kawan Glover, you know, and, and the, the, the issues that he's dealing with and how he pushed through that. And so it's like, wh where does that get created? Is it your support system? Is it just something like internally that drives that in you? So I'll, I'll be curious to, to ask him about that and where that comes from, because it's a tough thing to teach somebody having that per perseverance and that drive to be able to uh, accomplish things in the face of some pretty big adversity. Yeah. He also has a slogan and I, hopefully I'm not butchering his slogan, uh, but he basically says, if I can do it, you can do it too. And um, I, I think that's what he uses to motivate other people. We, you bring back that, those excuse pieces, right. That, yeah. you know, you know, maybe they don't have the limitations that David does, but you know, they, they're finding excuses not to go after what they, they want to go after. And then you see somebody like David not using any excuses, just going for whatever he wants to go after. Hopefully that will motivate that people going, you know what? let me let's eliminate those excuses let me really go after the things i want to go after i like that i liked it and i and i see it down here as bio he does say he's like if i can do it so can you so it's like i you know same the same message right you know getting it out there and being like look you can accomplish whatever you put your mind to so i'm excited to, to talk to him so we can we can go ahead and and bring him out so David Figueroa shares his story and journey of being diagnosed with cerebral palsy since birth, highlighting many struggles in the education system and successes as a former three sport athlete and three time state champion cyclist while being a middle school teacher with CP with others around the world to show that there is a light among all challenges behind it. And his slogan again is if I can do it, so can you. Well, David, welcome to the show, man. We're so excited to have you here on the Actions and Limits podcast. So thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to share uh, my story about perseverance, you know, how I 
how I grew up, uh, a little bit about my sports background, uh, my teaching background, and, and I guess other hobbies that I'm inter- I'm into right now. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys today. Awesome. I, I know that I know that Paul was on your podcast. So thank you again for coming on ours. And um, uh, since since Paul um, introduced you to our podcast, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Paul. Go ahead, man. David, your your story is near and dear to my heart for for many, many reasons. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your upbringing and uh, give us a little background, please. Well, um, when I was uh a bit younger. Oh, when I was younger, up to eight years old, um, I struggled, you know, be doing the basic uh, task of reading, walking, writing, uh, things like that. Um, I suffered tragedy in my family. Uh, my biological mom had passed away, and um, I had some triumphs along the way. I had, you know, a stepmom who came up and stepped stepped up and took care of me, and my father, and they they had to sacrifice themselves to from Puerto Rico to move here to Florida. And uh, because of them, uh, not only not only myself, but because of them, I'm able to uh, become a teacher and do all these, you know, successful things. You know, I used to be an athlete as well. So it's it's pretty exciting to be able to share all this all this journey with thousands of people and see how it how you can be positive despite a negative situation. So I'm excited to share more about that. That, that's awesome, David. Can you share with the audience what you suffer from so they have an understanding where you're coming from? I have CP, cerebral palsy, and my cerebral palsy is uh, spastic hemiplasia, which means uh, it impacts only one side of my body, which obviously um, you won't be able to see it through Zoom, but it's my right side of my body. So the right side of my body is impacted and... Um, but I've never let it stop me. Uh, I've never let it stop me do uh, to do any anything you know normal like play sports or any activities that I, I like to do. So. Did the kids uh, accept you as a as a kid with cerebral palsy, or, or was that an issue with you? At the beginning, no. But as you progress, um, as I kept growing up, the main thing that I used to focus on is. Every day of every school year would be a day of introduction. Now, every kid has, you know, the usual introduction. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I like this. I like, you know, I like doing that. Or, you know, I brought this with me, you know, like a little show and tell. The difference with me is I decided to talk about my disability. So that way the kids would be aware, hey, he has a disability, but he's not any different. We can, We don't. We don't have to treat him differently. He's just like us. He just has a few things that limit him. How did you come up with that? Because I, I, I think that's an amazing idea, David. Did your parents suggest that, or did you just come up yeah. with that on your my, own? My parents did uh, when I first started school. They always told me, hey, talk, make sure to mention your disability, and that way kids won't be so uh, rough on you, you know? Because the minute you think this like, and I, for instance, we already stick out like a short thumb, you know, as it is. So um, the main the main thing is educate, educate, educate. That's always so important. Uh, advocate for yourself and just um, just maintain a positive head all the time. Talk to me a little bit about sports. Uh, I know you have some limitations with the right side of your body. Were you playing sports with other kids? Or are you playing with sports with people that might suffer from similar uh, limitations like yourself? I played in leagues where, where uh, there were kids that suffered uh, various uh, different limitations. So um, I, I played uh, football, baseball, and uh, I was also a cyclist. And a lot of people, when I mention, you know, Football for, football, for example, they're like, football, but how do you play football? You have CP. Well, it's all about adaptation. You know, you, you have the normal sports, but they always, they tend to kind of tweak the rules a little bit. You know, it's, it's not your traditional football. It's, we used to play flag football because as a disability, you know, you're, you're more injury prone to get hurt. So 
uh, I would always be, uh, I was a running back and center back in high school. So that was my assigned position. Um, and then I played defensive end uh, on defense because I was very quick on the field, you know, going back and forth. Uh, baseball was the catcher because I was very good behind the plate. And I did that for 10 years. And uh, as a cyclist, I competed here um, locally. And I made it to state three, three, year, four, three out of the four years. I can say I won three states back to back to back. My fourth year, I didn't make it in the podium. But it was such an awesome experience. And um, a lot of the questions that I get with uh, when it comes to sports and facilities is, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you play? There's, uh, you have the cane and this obvious limitation. Well, it's just you have to find what you can do, you know, what your limit is. If you can hold on to the ball, then obviously you can be a, you know, you can be a running back. Or if you can throw, the, at least toss the ball, you know, you could be either a, a center or a quarterback. So it's all about finding your limitations, you know, adapt. Sure. Did you have any aspirations to get into the Special Olympics? Um, I, I compete when I competed for the four years, I was actually, um, I did so well that after, after when was it? Oh, seven, I kind of veered off a little bit cause I was focusing on school, but then, uh, apparently I caught the attention of, of Paralympic scouts because they have heard from me from years ago that I was, you know, this top prospect cyclist in my hometown. So then they decided to invite me in high school to the training facility up in Tampa, up in a, in Florida, at the university of South Florida. And they, their, their, their facility is amazing. Top of the line, you know, gym equipment. I got to meet the, the Paralympic basketball team. It was such an awesome atmosphere and they wanted, they wanted me to join them in their banquet. However, at the time I was still in high school and I couldn't really, you know, I couldn't really get out and we live, I live like two hours away. And the only, the only mode of transportation, transportation I had was my folks. So I had to kind of leave, leave that behind. And it's always been a dream of mine, but you know, I've never, I've never thought of, you know, letting it go, but who knows? Cause I mean, like I always tell people, once you turn 40, everything kind of goes downhill, you know, your, your, your body. Hey, 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 hey. 40 now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, it's, uh, trust me, I'm feeling it now. I'm feeling it now. I'm 30. My bot my body's not the same as it was. was. <laughs> I, I like what you talked about the adaptation. And I think that's a lesson that a, a lot of people can learn from, like learn how to adapt to your strong suits, adapt to, you know, figure out what your weaknesses are. What do you think were the biggest takeaways that you, you know, implement now in, into, you know, your podcast, your, your, your speaking that you do, what were your biggest takeaways as you struggled growing up with the things that you dealt with and how do you in implement that now and share that message? Well, you know, the, the way that I kind of approach it is a, um, you have, you have to think, you have to think about the future, not so much of the past, because, you know, if your past was negative all the time, then, then, and you stick to that mindset, you won't get anywhere. However, if you think about the future and you think about all the doors that are opening for you so far, then, then you'll, you'll get to your, you'll get to your goal. The key, the key is consistency. And also, um, sometimes you may have to improvise along the way too, you know? Yeah. That uh, and like I mentioned, again, right? Yeah. Adapt and over improvise, adapt and overcome. I love it. I love that. Three, three different things that I've always, you know, believed in. Um, and most people, most people think, Hey, you know, I come from this like broken family. I won't be able to get anywhere. Or I have this certain disability that's going to, that's going to hinder me. Um, if you think that way, then things will go, things will go a certain direction versus if you think positively, then it'll swing over to the, to the, like a, like a pendulum, it'll swing over to, to the, to the positive side. Yeah. So my, my thing is to also take all the negative and use it, channel it as positivity. You know, if, if you, if you, if you suffered a lot of negativity in your life, take that negativity and use it to construct something good for you. 
something that will better yourself, not only yourself, but the world, you know, and the people around you. Well, how, how do you do that? Like, can you give us an example of taking some of the negative and turning it into positive or using it as a positive fuel? Well, an example I could give you is um, when I was in school, um, when I first started going to school, I was in Puerto Rico. Uh, in Puerto Rico, the school system there, when it came to kids with disabilities, was absolutely abysmal. You know, they didn't, they didn't want anything to do with me, mm-hmm. even though I was like a straight A student. I was, you know, I was top of the class, but teachers would look at me and they'd say, man, he's too slow. I don't want him in my classroom. You know, I don't want him here. And it just, it was always negative when it, when it came to just me being in the classroom. And that kind of went, that negativity kind of went towards my, my folks. And, you know, my folks didn't take it too kindly. So one day my, my stepmom, my stepmom went to the school and she went up to the dean and she took my record, my record out of the file. She ripped it in half and she said, "All right, we're, we're moving out. We're moving out of Puerto Rico, and we're putting you in a better school because you shouldn't be treated that way. And no child should be treated, you know, like he's second, you know, he's, he's second behind everybody else, you know. So uh, I moved to Florida and doors started opening. So after that." Um, it was a lot less, it was a lot less negativity. Like I didn't deal with any, I didn't deal with a lot of adversity. Although the only adversity I battled was my, was myself, you know, believing in myself, um, telling myself, Hey, you can, you can, you can get through school. You can accomplish your goals. It, that's the one thing that I always, you know, battled against is myself. And so I got older and I realized, Hey, I, I've done all this so far. So I just have to keep going. So what would you tell other people that might have a CP or, or some limitations to help them in their lives? What has, what, what advice could you give? Because I know you're a teacher. Hey, just like the title of your podcast says, actions have no limits. If you, if you're positive and you, you show people that you're, that you want to achieve this goal, it's about staying, staying hungry you you t- you take those two things and those two things will be a uh, part of you becoming successful um the the key also is to tr- to try your best and accept the disability for what it is if you can you know cuz for most people it can be very difficult it, it it took me until I graduated college to realize hey this is me and this will always be me this cane will always be me because I, I walk with a crutch. So, uh, um, and then, you know, and if, and if, and if anybody else has anything negative to say, then that's on them. You know, you can't let somebody tell you, Hey, you're, you're disabled. Let's just bring you down. You know, you, you got to take your disability and use it for the, use it for the better. You know, that's you, that's who you are. That's who you always will be. And you just have to, you know, own it. I like that, man. I think that's such a great lesson for people out there to learn is just whatever you're dealing with, whatever situation, whatever hand you're dealt, own it and and do whatever you can with that. And I, and I love your positive mindset. And I know Paul does because that's that's Paul's jam right there. That growth mindset. It seems like your your parents were a huge influence in you and, and, and how you developed and giving you those opportunities and just saying, hey, never settle just keep on doing and giving you that mindset. Is, is that pretty accurate, David? It is. I like that, man. That's I, so I, What's the future for David? Where are you taking this speaking engagement? Where are you taking your, your teaching career? Where what's, what's next? Well, my, my goal right now, my, my goal in the future would be as much as I love being in the classroom, you know, I, I love being in the classroom and all, but I want to be able to teach uh, an audience, you know, I want to teach audiences all over, you know, through public speaking, because education doesn't have to be just in the classroom. It can be at a university. It can be at a nonprofit. It can be anywhere um, you allow it to be. Education uh, can can go anywhere. You know, it, it it has no no limit as to where it can go. So my goal with the public speaking is hopefully within. I could say give or take two years to be fully, you know, just 
focusing on this, you know, full time. Oh, I like that, man. I, that it sounds that that sounds like you're you're on your way to doing that, man, and and have that passion for it, right? I I really like that. What so if people do want to reach out to you, what's the best way to to reach out to you, David? Um, if for a speaking gig or or coaching, um, you can you can reach out to me at my email, which is David's. D A V I D S C P fitness at gmail.com. Um, you can also reach, you can also reach out to me at my Instagram at David's CP fitness. You can also, um, and you can also reach out to me on Twitter at David's CP fitness. I like that, man. I like that. Man, a lot of great stuff, David. It sounds like you're doing some great things, and and I love your mindset. You know, I love that 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 no quit, that adapt and overcome. You know, I I think that's an that's an army thing, right? You know, it's like you know never stop. Whatever obstacles you come in encounter with, because we're all gonna have obstacles, right? Figure out a way to get around them. I, I really love that mindset of yours, David. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. What what else you got for him, Paul? What before we you know start to wrap up the show a little bit here, David? You know I understand a lot that you went through as a kid as far as you know being different than the other other kids, and I know that you're uh, a teacher now, so I'm sure you're real sensitive about people standing out and people bullying and and you know not treating people properly. What do you teach your kids? So they accept people that are, are different. I teach them the value of, of, um, of, of caring and, you know, the value of hard work and acceptance and inclusion. Inclusion, especially because um, as, as I was growing up, you know, going through school, there would be activities where uh, I would be, you know, kind of excluded and so the thing that I teach my students is if you have a classmate with a disability, no matter physical or intellectual, attempt to include them in the activity. You know, it could be something as small as passing out cards or, you know, or being a moderator for a certain event. Um, it's all about um, the, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sum it up this way. It's about advocacy inclusion, uh, teamwork, and communication. You know, uh, communication is so important when it comes to students with disability in the, in the classroom be- because I see, all, I see it all the time, you know. Kids will be shouting across the room to the one student that has a certain disability, something derogatory, yet you don't, you don't, you don't know what you've been through. However, if you take the time to listen to them and let them explain what they have or just sit with them, befriend them and get to learn, learn about them a little bit, then you might change your, your mindset or your perception. I, I dealt with that a lot. Like I had kids that used to bully me. And then within a few years, they were like, oh, but he's, he's, he's completely normal. So now he's my friend. So a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the bullies that I had in school, now that we're adults, we're, I'm friends with a few of them still. And it's incredible what the power of education and inclusion can do. Sure. So do you think that that's more on the 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 room? Yeah, I I like that. Like putting it out there in front. Do you think that's more on the parents or is it more on the teacher to get that message across and open up that, that dialogue? It's more on the parent because the teacher, they may know, they may know a lot. And also as a teacher, um, you know, if you were to kind of talk, if you were to kind of mention that in front of a group of students, the student might be sensitive to that particular topic at the moment. You know, you sure. let the student take lead, you know, let the student talk about it themselves. Like if they feel comfortable, let them open up, you know, don't let, don't mention it yourself. I like that. And I think your parents did a great thing, you know, putting that out there and, and getting that message to you to put it out there in front of everybody so it's not something that, you know, is discussed, you know, behind your back. It's like, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. This is the facts of the situation. This is me. 
you know, <laughs> and so I, I give your parents a lot of, you know, credit for that. And I think that, that everyone else out there can learn from how your parents dealt with that and, and the, the gifts and the mindset that they, you know, bestowed upon you. So I, a lot of great stuff, David. Yeah. Yeah. The re the reason I mentioned that is because, um, you know, dealing with uh, as a teacher that has dealt with multiple students with various disabilities, I see it all the time. You know, they'll, they'll be like, as soon as the student like, you know, reads a sentence and they read it like slower than usual, that's when they start heckling the student, you know, they're calling him slow and they're, they're saying all these things. And so, um, you know, and as a teacher, my, my, my job is to kind of say it to the student, Hey, you know, let, let them read at their, their pace. Let them, let them do things as, as a, as the best as possible, you know, and, uh, and another thing is, as a teacher, it's your job to encourage that said student to uh, to stay positive. You know, I've I've sat down with students after class that have been that told me, you know, you know, um, you know, they told me, Mr. Figueroa, I can't I can't do this because these kids are always heckling me, and you know, and I read slower than most of them in the classroom, and sometimes I'll just sit there with them for five minutes, and we'll just we'll just talk about the situation, talk about the disability. And I always tell them, you know, um, you know, don't, don't listen to them. It's about what you want. Let your actions do the talking. Let your grades do the talking. Let your assignments do the talking. Don't don't talk back at them. Show them that you're 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 smart by your your classroom ability. I like that. I like that. And you you brought up the actions too, which uh, I know Paul loves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, David, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier in, our, in the conversation, because I know uh, Justin will be curious on this one as well. Uh, you talked about, you know, being 30 and your body breaking down. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with, you know, having CP. So what can you do to slow down that process and maybe improve the process of your body? Uh, because obviously you want to live an active life for many, many years. So obviously it starts with diet and, and exercise, but do you have any insight on how to keep yourself, you know, in tip top shape? Uh, definitely. Um, keep yourself moving uh, as a per as an individual with CP like, like yourself, it's important that we stay moving because the minute we stop, that's when our body, that's when our bodies really start to feel it and we start getting stiff and, and, uh, all the all these kinds of elements and issues pop up so it's important to stay moving um it's important to uh watch what you watch your your diet i mean you can enjoy the foods that you like to eat but remember to enjoy them in moderation and um and just just keep yourself keep yourself busy you know keep uh keep yourself productive because sometimes um sometimes having a disability can get a little a little rough with certain things so if you keep yourself busy then you'll be able to to live as long as you can I like that simple stuff you know move your body whatever that means right it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be in the gym if it's swimming if it's walking if it's jogging whatever that means to you you know i, I think that's the most important thing out there is do some kind of movement you know and and like you said make sure you're eating right because that's always a factor you know what you're putting in your body and hydrating yourself so a lot, a lot of great stuff david thank you so much for for coming on here and, and sharing you know your story and what you're into um so we like to to wrap up the show and you kind of you kind of mentioned this a little bit already but we like to wrap up the show with the the title of our podcast in mind actions and limits and ask our guests what would you say is the number one action that people can take right now that can really make a difference in their lives? That, that is a very good question. Um, if you were to take, I guess, one action is just to, to, to speak up. Mm -hmm. uh, speak up for what you believe in. Because um, like, like we've, we've been talking about disability this whole this whole podcast. Uh, when it comes to disability, it's so important to speak up because um, if you don't speak up, a lot of things a lot of things won't happen. You know, um, especially when you're dealing in a situation where you're struggling or you're trying to uh, 
accomplish a certain goal. Uh, the key thing is to speak up and to, and to, as I mentioned earlier, advocate. You know, if you don't speak up and advocate, people won't listen. Sure. But when they hear your voice and they, they hear the positivity and the, the passion behind it, and that you're advocating for, for yourself or for, for people around you, that speaks volumes. I like that. Well, that that's powerful, David. I, I really like that. Speak up for what you believe in, right? And, and, and put it out there into the world. I think there's a lot of application for that. And so the, the, the other side of that are these limits, these self-imposed limits that we place on ourselves, which I think you talked about a little bit as well. What have you seen as the number one limit that people out there put on themselves that we need to get rid of right now? De definitely um, not, not believing in themselves, you know, just, just uh, putting themselves down. Um, I've, I've met some people with uh, low self-esteem, you know, and the, the key, the key to combating that is find something you like to do, like a, like a, like a hobby that you like to do, or just uh, speak to someone, you know, it's all it takes is just someone to sit there and, and listen to you and have them listen to you, yeah. you know, cause uh, because a lot of the weight, it, it gets off your shoulders if you have somebody to just sit there and listen to you. So that's that's how I feel that you can get through a lot of your your limits. I like that. You know, that, that self-critic that we all have, every single one of us has, you know, but uh, be aware of it, right? And 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 not let it affect you and, and the actions that you do take. So, David, lots of great insight, man. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show, sharing your story. Um, and, and Paul and I wish you the best in your speaking career and, and the teaching that you do, because um, because that, that's so important as well. Because you every day you get to influence you know those that that you get to to be around and those that you get to teach. So thank you so much for coming on the show and and being a part of this for us, man. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. I was glad to have David on the show. I know you were on his podcast. What were your biggest takeaways from what David shared today, man? His limitless potential in himself. He, you know, walks with a cane. He has a lot of uh, things that have thrown at him obstacle wise, but it, it sounds like it has not let anything stop him. He has a very, very strong mindset and I hope he keeps it up because he's going to be doing great things in the speaking world. And he's already doing great things in the, in the education world. So sky's the limit for him. I, yeah. I, I love his adaptability mindset that he had there. And it, it sounds like a lot of that came from his parents, just give, giving them that drive and be like, never quit. Like, this is the hand you're, you've been dealt. What are you going to do with it? You know, you could sit there and, you know, you know, complain about what, what your situation is, or you can go and, and make something happen. So um, I, it just goes back to show how important that support system is and in, in the people succeeding in their life, no matter what. So, but I, I give him and his family, you know, credit for that. So another great show. Um, let's go ahead and, and wrap it up with another segment of Ask Paul Anything. Um, I had a I had a good question come in. I'm, I'm I'm curious to to see how you you answer this one. So, this one comes in from Susan in Nebraska, and it says, "Paul, if you were to die suddenly this evening, what would you regret not having done?" And there's a follow up question to this. Okay, so I answer this question first, and then you're going to give me the follow up. Yes. If I died this evening, what would I regret? Not having done. Not having done. Um, I'm not going to give myself a, a pat on the back here, Justin. Uh, but uh, I, I, I will. I will tell you this: that uh, I don't really have too many re regrets in my life. You know, I'm pretty content. Uh, of where I am in my life and, and what I'm, I'm, I'm going for and what I'm accomplishing. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't have that many regrets at all. I mean, if I did, if I do, they're very, very minor that really would not um, move the needle at all. Sure. Well, that's good. I think that's a good thing. It kind of negates the follow-up question, you know, why haven't you done it? 
but mm-hmm. um it's uh it, it's always it's something to think about too and, and i think that we we touched on this you know a little bit with with david you know it's like what are we you you can't you can't regret anything you need to go out there and just like you know do everything that you can regardless of the hand that you've been dealt so it's uh and you talk to these people that that deal with people on their deathbed and they don't talk about you know oh i should have should have went to another meeting i should have um you know done another deal but they they all have certain regrets in their life but it normally comes back to you know not trying certain things or not spending enough time with your family so it's it's good to to ask yourself that question I mean, like, like right now, like what would be a regret? And then, you know, get to it. So you're not regretting it on your deathbed. So interesting question, but thank you, Susan, for sending your question into Actions and Limits. And uh, everyone out there, continue to send your questions in to actionsandlimits at gmail.com. And you can get your question featured on our segment, Ask Paul Anything. Paul, another great show. I was glad David was able to come on here and, and share his insight. I think he's got a real positive Uh, mindset which i know you know that's your jam man so another great show i agree for justin atherton this is paul fortune we'll see you next week all right see you next monday thank you for listening to the show don't miss an episode click and subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on your favorite podcast platform And find us on Instagram and Facebook under Actions and Limits to stay updated on all our upcoming content. Continue to email the show at actionsandlimits at gmail.com for our segment Ask Paul Anything. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.